So let's have a look at some results that we've acquired and in particular concentrate on the real-time full matrix capture total focusing method uh, imaging. Here we have a test block that we're going to be looking at. On the right hand side uh, picture you'll see we've got the array mounted on the test block and starting around about 25 millimeters into the test block we have a series of side drilled holes and the details of the side drilled holes are shown on the left hand side here. The key thing to look at is that uh, at the 3.5 megahertz uh, transducer rate, uh, transducer uh, frequency that we have, uh, the, f the first two holes the gap between them is less than one wavelength and so this is going to provide a real challenge to our imaging. So along the bottom here we see several of the different sorts of images that we have get, get from our system. On the left hand side here we see 32 out of the 1024 uh, data sets that we have acquired from it. This corresponds to uh, a single transmit excitation and uh, here we see the echoes all the way across the uh, uh, all the way, uh, uh, across the array showing the patterns of holes in the middle. The central image in the bottom there is a standard B scan reconstructed from that data set using our uh, full raw data processing and you can see that the holes are a very good representation of what we have in the um, in the test pattern above. On the right hand side is just a different view of this B scan, which is now shown as a 3D profile, where amplitude uh, represents the height of the individual uh, features. And here we see a small video sequence of what happens as you move the array back and forward along the length of this test block. So basically, the array is moving it, uh, over the whole pattern, and you can see the way that the RF data, again, we're seeing 32 out of the 1024 uh, streams acquired at any individual time and the characteristic plot that you see across there shows the relatively broadband transmit excitation that you get and the, uh, the receive waveforms that you get from each of the 32 channel elements in parallel. Here we see the B scan and as indicated earlier that uh, you can see all six holes extre extremely well uh, the update rate is, is extremely good. We've got the capability of looking at different profiles and changing the, uh, changing the imaging uh, lookup table and so on on the right hand side. Uh, what we can do is we can normalize the data rate, uh, the normalize the data uh, here and uh, this normalizes it so that the peak echo amplitude is referenced to a certain value. And We can now switch to our 3D display you see exactly the same information moving as a 3D display and again the update is very fast. Uh, we typically run at around, around about uh, 20 frames a second for this. I mentioned one of the advantages of the FRD technique is that from exactly the same data you can do post-processing steering. So on the left hand side here we see the zero degree beamform where the, again the energy is coming from the left hand side but with exactly the same data set we can change the delay profile that we implement for the full raw data processing and here we have on the middle and on the right hand end we have minus 20 and plus 20 degree imaging uh, one of the features of the left hand one is that the echoes amplitudes for the holes are lower than the first one it comes across because of the shadowing of the first effect but with a minus 20 degree uh, we're able to send the energy in at, at, uh, so that there is a much less shadowing effect and we see uh, uh, the echo amplitudes all matched. We've also produced some results on carbon fiber. Here we have the same array. Uh, we have a, an acoustic delay line in between and we have a small, uh, a small sample of uh, carbon fiber with some side drill holes as a test pattern uh, in this. On the right hand side we see the matching image. Uh, it's very easy to see the two features, the two side drills, the echoes from the two side drills holes in it and the shadowing behind it. And you can also see echoes from the plies and these will become significantly more uh, pronounced if we turn the gain up but uh, normally we don't want to see these. So the configuration that we've used on this, we, uh, we are, uh, because we're able to acquire 
uh, 32 channels in parallel, uh, we're able to acquire our 1024 RF streams in 3.2 milliseconds because we're using a 10 kilohertz PRF. And we can do it even in an even shorter time if we went for a higher PRF. The data is temporarily stored in the DRAM on the board before transferring to the host. And we're then implementing our full raw data reconstruction in the host. And as I've said, we're able to achieve around about a 20 hertz frame rate for this. However, one of the advantages of the FPGA is that you've got the capability of actually doing the FRD processing within the FPGA itself. And so we're able to migrate the, alg uh, migrate the algorithms into the FPGA. And as a result of that, only the image data needs to be transferred to the host, so we can get very fast data rates even with, with using conventional PXI rather than PXI Express uh, buses. And this should give us around another further uh, fourfold speed up. The scalable architecture would look something like this if we're not just doing uh, FRD but doing a fully beamform transmit. Uh, we have a three board set, we typically involve uh, a, another flex Rio with 32 uh, transmitters in the, what we call the T32. Uh, in between we've got the receivers, preamps, low noise preamps and uh, transmit receive protection switches along with a high voltage programmable power supply in the middle. And on the right hand end is, is the 32 channel digitizer that we've already discussed. The connection uh, can be made to a 32 element array directly or alternatively you can do it via a multiplexer to a 128 channel uh, system along the top by using uh, the multiplexer card or the array connector interface. This can be readily scaled up to 64 or even 128 channels in parallel by taking this three board set and replicating them into the chassis and indeed this same multiplexer and array connector interface can then be extended across all those boards. So it's a very flexible system indeed. And here we have a, a variant of this. Uh, if you're not requiring fully beamform transmit but you're, only, but you're able to get away with full matrix capture and total focusing method only, that allows you to use a single element or a few, a group of uh, a very small number of transmit channels and multiplex those to the appropriate elements. So here we have a system which just uses two PXI slots uh, and this, uh, this system uh, matches the uh, configuration that we saw earlier on and that produced all the images earlier on. So in conclusion, what can we say? Well, the performance is definitely, uh, definitely there. We're achieving full, ma full matrix capture and total focusing already at real-time rates in the host, uh, and that's when we're processing in the host PC. And this is around about 40 times faster than uh, other systems that are available on the market. However, one of the uh, benefits of the FPGA is that we're able to achieve even faster speed-ups than that, and certainly around about uh, a further fourfold speed up should be achievable. The system is modular. As indicated here, you can either have fully beamformed transmit or you can go for just full matrix capture total focusing method systems. Uh, they, uh, you can choose whether you're multiplexed or not. So it's, uh, the end user can uh, make the choice of which hardware and software modules they're after. It's very flexible. It will work for high channel count individual probes uh, right the way through conventional beamforming to full matrix capture and total focusing method systems. We've addressed the scalability issue uh, because it allows you to expand up to address evolving requirements. However, it's extremely easy to start off with a relatively small system with maybe 32 channels with a multiplexing. And when you've developed a system that's capable, if you find out that you need uh, a significant amount of parallelism, then this means that you can just scale the uh, scale the receiver up in parallel, and it will work with that. And a benefit of that is that the if you're doing processing within the FPGAs, then as you scale up the uh, the number of FPG uh, the number of modules that you're using, then this also increases increases the processing power. And as a further follow up to that, it's a very efficient implementation. Right from scratch, uh, taking the uh, 
the digitizing system, designing the architecture right the way through to actually implementing it and producing those real-time images just took three months. So we see this as just part of the continuing, continuing evolution of full raw data processing. Uh, we started off, as you can see, right in the top left-hand corner with, uh, with an 8-bit uh, systems using 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk drives. We've migrated right the way through the full variant of PCI uh, through to PXI, and now using the Flex Rio system, we're able to achieve these uh, significant imaging performance uh, at real-time data rates. Thank you very much.